Welcome to Bite Size Bio Dialects. Right, so what we'll be covering. So the, the various Irish dialects, as and as we all know, there are many of them. Basically, what is a dialect? Some differences between the dialects, how to understand other dialects. Should I choose a particular dialect? That's a question that many people uh, tend to have. And of course, your general questions. So there'll be a um, good lot of info and some tips to, to figure out what another person is saying, because some people can find that difficult. Um, so don't let it be daunting, the whole concept of dialects. That's, I'd say, the first thing I'd say to anyone about dialects. Don't, they're there, they exist. Uh, they're a fact of life, but don't let them sort of overwhelm you. Um, they're just this necessity that we that we have to deal with, but they're not as complicated as people want to make them out to be, but they have their intricacies, of course. Um, so, like in English, as is, as is here, there are eight major American dialects, and then all over the world there are so many others, like the British English and American English and... Um, I burn no English, the English spoken in Ireland, and we all know that they have tons of differences. I'd say the best example would be chips and fries, as is written on the top there. Like your understanding of chips could be something that's um, that's cold and you buy in the, in a bag at a shop, whereas a uh, whereas my understanding of chips would be hot hot stuff bought from uh, something like McDonald's. So hot potatoes, so um, you'd probably call them fries or whatever. So it all depends on where you're from. So um, there's all those those differences. And we're used to those. Um, if you if you speak English, especially if you're a, a native English speaker, you're quite used to those. And they don't really, you know that they exist, but you're not going to be too confused. Of course, there are some things like uh, biscuits. That's another one. They can have different meanings. And so many other words, they do have different meanings in English. But people get over those differences. And there are so many different um, terms of speech. Um, I came across one lately, um, to motion a table. And sorry, to table a motion, I should say. I did way around to table a motion. And that is the complete different um, meaning, a completely different meaning, depending on where you're from. So the Atlantic makes a big difference. So it's the same in Ireland with uh, with with the with uh, the dialects in Irish. You've got all these differences, just like in English, but it, 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 it's all contained in one little island, sort of. Um, so so that's that's I suppose the most um, most visible and most obvious uh, difference. Uh, but you see that in all countries anyhow. Um, so the first thing. To getting over the, this, let's say, what you could see as a barrier, is that it's all the same language. Remind yourself that it's all the same language. So that's that, that's a very important thing to remember because if it's all the same language, there are obviously going to be an awful lot of similarities, and what it, it could really be just a delusion. Some of those uh, differences that you see, they're there but they can be a bit delusional. They're actually not as different in one way as you may think they are at first. So, and then there are different accents. So that adds to, to it again. So you could have someone with the same dialect, but different accents. Um, so that that, that um, comes into play. And there are different terms and phrases as we discussed there uh, about in English, same in Irish. And um, of course, then there are the mixed dialects where you have someone who, Say you have a child and they have a parent from um, London and a parent from New York. They're going to they're going to be, have a bit of a mixed dialect, and um, there are going to be a lot of influences there. So it's the same in Irish. So there are many people, be it because their parents come from different places in Ireland, or because they have lived in different Gaeltachs or something of the sort, or because of just different influences from listening to TV, to TG Cahar or something, or to, to the radio. They just they, Say you're from you're from Kerry, but you listen to an awful lot of uh, Ulster Irish. So uh, and of course we'll be going into where all those areas are in Ireland, um. But it all has an influence. So a mixed dialect isn't a bad thing. It's it exists in all languages, I would say, and um, it's it's just what what exists. And this um, people can be a bit hung up with the idea of a pure dialect, which often doesn't isn't even a thing. So um. There's the 
So we'll be dealing with all of that in more detail in terms of Irish Gaelic, of course. So now we move on to the three main dialects in Irish. Now there's up north, there's what's called the Ulster dialect. So that's uh, mainly Donegal. So that's where the Gaeltacht is in the day now, the Donegal Gaeltacht, of course, there's, there are slight differences um, between North Donegal Irish and Mid Donegal, or Central Donegal Irish and um, Southern Donegal Irish. There are some differences there. Um, one example being that there's one parish where people drop the R's, they don't uh, include R's in words. So it's a, it, that makes a difference, but like a, you've, <laughs> there's, there are also those dialects in, in, in English, I should say, of, of course, um, there are many dialects like that where people just uh, don't um, pronounce their R's. So that's just one parish in Donegal where that happens. And of course, then you go down south and you come to Connacht, now, first of all, you come across Mayo, and that's like the first, the, the, the top half of Connacht. Now, that's, you could say, a mixture of the more southern dialect, southern Connacht dialect, that being the Galway dialect, which is a very broad term, um, which is mostly Connemara. That's how people would um, would recognise it anyhow as, as, a Con as Connemara Irish. Um, so you have that's that's Galway now. Connemara is Galway, but you well, the thing is with Mayo, um, that's a slight mixture between both Ulster and Connacht. So you have that Donegal influence and that Connemara influence, and that sort of you, you can actually hear um, those two influences there. And um, then, of course, as I was saying, you've got the Galway Gaeltacht being most um which is most famously known as the Connemara uh, dialect and you have um, the Aten Islands and um different areas within within that, that sort of Connemara what's known as Connemara and then you you see there's a sort of a, a splodge there more if you see um in in Galway Bay there's um, there's what's known as the East Galway dialect, and that's most similar to what to the Irish I speak now. So that's different again from Connemara, similar but different. And there there's even an older dialect there, which is sort of a halfway between Connemara and Mayo. So it's again you get an awful lot of uh, different little dialects because of influence um, from different areas, because of geography basically, and. Then we go down south, even further, and we come to Munster. Uh, so the, to the province of Munster, and there we have a few Gaeltachs. So they're spread out, as you can see. There's the one in Dingle Peninsula, and also known as Corcoghina, and all th th that information about the Irish names for these dialects and more in information on the more local dialects are available in the handout, which is... Um, which is linked to this uh, th this webinar, but uh, we can we can go into that m m later. Um, so there's the Irish that's found in the Dingle Peninsula. There you can see uh, Dingle Peninsula, Dunqueen. So that area you have a certain dialect there. Then further south we have another dialect in Kerry. And then we go into we go east into Cork where there's a uh, Moose and that's different again, of course, and there are different parishes in that area and they have slightly different dialects. And then we go further east again to Unrhine or Ring, as it's known in, in English. And that's, that's, um, that's in Waterford and they have different Irish again. So that's, uh, that can sound very different from all the other dialects because it's, it's sort of, you could say, isolated. It's isolated. Now, also on that map, you see South Armagh up north but in Ulster. There's a South Armagh to the east, and that there's there's traditionally been a dialect there. And we be that's the thing about the um, the 
urban dialects as well. That's mostly what's what you what what's there now. But um, traditionally, there's been um, a rural uh, dialect, uh, Uriel, it was known as. And then further south, you see um, do, you see some green areas there, and there um, that's the Mead dialect or Mead Gaeltacht, I should say. It's not actually a dialect; it's a Gaeltacht, and that's. That's what you could say is a man-made guilt. Now, it's sort of artificial in a sense because that was because of a project that was done in the 30s, if my memory serves me right. And that's when people were brought from Connemara and, uh, well, from Connacht and resettled. So it was a resettlement project. And um, there's uh, of, of, of Irish-speaking people from Connacht. And that's why you have a certain guilt of the area there. So, but it's it's Connacht Irish. Um, so that's so there are they are the three main dialects Ulster, Connacht, and Munster. So even with those other dialects with, within them and all those different accents, they are still the three basic ones, and you can hear the differences. And that that's the most important thing to understand that there are three uh, three main ones because the other ones they're the, the ones within them, let's say, um, sort of child dialects, I suppose you could call them, um, those ones they. Of course, they have differences, but that's the, the differences are way less significant as the differences between, let's say, Connacht and Munster. So the three main ones, that's that's the most important thing to understand. And in again, in that handout, um, you'll be able to to hear in your own time, you'll be able to hear some some recordings of people from these uh, various areas. So you can hear the differences. So oh, now we, we go on to the urban dialect. And if you have any questions, don't be afraid to, to ask. So um, the urban guilt. So these are what you could call non-traditional guilt. And they're not they're not um, Government recognised as the other, as the vast majority of the other guilds of that. So, so as it says here, an urban guild of the Irish has a strong presence. This is spoken language, but it is not part of the officially defined or traditional guild of theories. So, uh, you've got Belfast up the north. You've got Belfast, um, which is a strong, uh, as a strong Irish presence, and very they have cultural centres, schools. It's, it's quite strong. And then you have Dublin, you've got loads of schools and um, cultural centres and the like. Galway as well, Galway being so near to Connemara, it's only natural. Um, Derry again being so near to Donegal and Cork, of course you've got to, you've um, you've got a, quite a, a large community there of Irish speakers. So that, that's, um, they're the most they're, I would say, the, the strongest urban dialects. The other towns around the country, they would have uh, Gale schools. There are Gale schools all over. So they, those are um, schools for for children under the age of 12. And all, all the classes are taught through the medium of Irish. So they're all over the country. But um, there are also those pockets of Irish-speaking communities all over the country as well mostly in the more urban areas. And when it comes to dialect, for example, it, because of it being a separate community, even though it would have, uh, and because of the various different influences from, let's say, Ulster and or the three main, um, from the, the, the different influences from the three main dialects, you do have, um, you do have sort of a mixture there, mixed in with the natural native Dublin accent, so you've you've got that mixture. The same with Belfast and anywhere else. So that's how that's how you have sort of those those unique dialects, um, sort of new emerging unique dialects. So uh, now some people wouldn't wouldn't think of them as dialects, but just think I I don't know how, how they would refer to them as, but they're they're dialects in themselves. I would say, but that's not my own. I suppose you could say personal opinion. But um, they, they exist, and um, they're just 
if if it's not, I suppose it's because I suppose some people would say that it's not a dialect because there are just so few people and everyone has their own sort of dialect. For, let's say in Dublin, so it it depends. It's your own opinion, really. You, um, if it's an actual unique dialect or not. And Siobhan, I have a question while you're on there. Okay. All right. Um, so Aaron asked a question that we can probably cover later. So Aaron, feel free to keep asking questions, okay? And John, he asked, um, he said, while we're on the urban grant ducks, I'd be curious to hear about the pop-up grant ducks. Um, I've heard, read just a little bit about them, and it seems an urban method for folks to get together and practice the language. So I've been to one, and my sister was one, the one in Cork lately. So Siobhan, have you heard of these at all? I've heard of them. I don't know that much about them, but I what I understand it to be is like um, a get together in a pub where everyone talks Irish. That's my understanding of it. I might have the wrong, <laughs> the wrong, have got the wrong um, meaning. But uh, you've been to one, Owen? Yeah, um, it it depends on organisation. So it's a it's a great idea. Definitely, it's um, it's a way to get together with people informally in a way you wouldn't have a chance to get to know them otherwise. So I was at one in Limerick, um, and it was it was not that everybody in the pub is speaking Irish, it's like you meet in a special corner of the pub, and I think we could have done a better job advertising it, because there was nothing to say in the pub, here's the top of Gwenta. It was just like you have to open your ear and walk around the pub to find the people. Um, so it's it's definitely it's a great idea, and it's lovely to have something to like center people's focus on, because yeah, we were meeting up like that in Limerick for a couple of years uh, using Meetup.com, but we didn't have this idea of pop up Gwelt where yeah the the idea is you just get together for a good old chat. So um, yeah, it just goes to show um, in the urban areas how that's working. It would be in the cities, really. Like you, you wouldn't get an urban grill, a, a pop-up grill duct in the grill duct itself because that doesn't really make sense. So it's really happening in the towns and cities of Ireland, and it works well because news travels about them too. So social media and like Nos Mag N O S magazine online they publish news about events like that. So, uh, John, very question. Thank you. And so on, back to you. So um yeah, so that that's thanks so for telling us about um, about that experience. So um they, they do seem like a great idea. Um so is so um thanks John for the question also. So let's see now. So um I think I can move on now to the actual differences themselves. So we were talking about sort of, let's say, the theory of it, but these are getting sort of up close and personal with the different um, dialects. So something so basic as how are you? So it's something that you say pretty much every day. So as, as you can see in English, there are things like what's up, how are things, how are you keep, and how are you? So many different things are said. And everyone, pretty much everyone understands them, basically. There are some people who might not because it's more modern or just, it's just not something that's ever said in your area, ever, and you, maybe you um, haven't come across it on TV or on the internet. But um, generally, people have come across way, way more ways of saying something than they would say it themselves personally. So, like you might never say what's up, but you understand what it's what 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 it means when someone walks up to you and just says it, and they're not saying it as if they're concerned about you either. So, you know, there's um there's different different intonations and everything. But anyhow, when it comes to Irish, um, here's how the how it goes. So as you, as you can see, the three of them they look different. Now they all start with C, and that's I suppose the biggest, <laughs> um. A similarity between the three of them, and they all end in two, so that's a start. So I'll just say the three of them, and forgive my poor Ulster uh, attempt. 
but um kajim are taught to that's my take and how they would say that connor dialect kehwilto monster dialect kunasatu so they all sound different as well um as is obvious now the thing is kade king kui kunas Kadi uh, Mar, I should say. So that's like how I would pronounce it in my dialect. I would say Kadi Mar, whereas in in Ulster you would say Kadi Mar. So as you can hear, that is different. But um, when you get used to it, when you understand the Kadi is the same as Kadi, it's um, it's easy enough to get your head around all the other sentences that begin with Kadi or Kadi. So. Cade mar, kien hui, and kunus. They have all the same meanings. Now, they all mean how, literally. They mean how. So, if you wanted to ask about how something done, or how's the, uh, how's, how are you, as, for, for example, but how are, how is something, how something done, or just asking a general question that would begin in English with how. It would be said with one of these uh, words, or word orders. Um, so, as you can see, there's um, Kajemar, that would be how someone would ask how in, in Ulster. Uh, not as a standalone how, but um, how, like um, how is that done or whatever. Uh, in in Connacht, they would say Kenhui, so it would be something like Kenhui again to a cup on tea. How's a, a cup of tea made? So, and in Ulster, it would be something like Kaje Marie into a cup on tea or something like that. That would be how's a cup of tea made up there. So it's the same thing in all three dialects, they're just different. Um, so this is a basic thing. Now the thing with these differences between the dialects, it's mostly the most common, it's generally the most common phrases that are the most different. And it's that's an, um, an, a pretty handy thing to remember because um, these things I suppose they do, because they're so common and have been for centuries, they do get a bit um, I suppose influenced and um, they, they change, they change um, generation by generation. So that's uh, so that's how you say how and how are you. So you can say a tall, a will, a tall. So a tall, a will, they're the same verb. They're just different. They're, they're just different forms of the same verb, uh, the verb be. But that's of course a bit grammatical for now. And uh, to is means you. To means you. So um, of course, if you've got if you've got um, a basic hang of Irish, you will these differences won't seem as daunting because uh, especially after a while, especially when you see them, when you've been made aware of them, um, because. You'll understand that two means you, because that's the same in every dialect. And the tall and the will, you'll more than likely understand after um, a while of um, of learning Irish that it's the same verb. It's just a different form, and um, it sort of means is or are. And um, that's that's the thing. It's just a kaje or kinghui. You might be very very used to saying kunas, for example, kunas atatu, kunas te, how's tea made? So kunas, kunas, kunas. Maybe that's all you you know of, but and you're just unaware of the others. That might be the the biggest problem there. But we'll 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 get around to how you'll find out about all these differences shortly. So uh, we'll move on from asking how are you to the next thing we have: how there are different words and the same meaning. So you have this in English. Um, so it could be like um, lead, by, chap, whatever. It all means the same. It's it's a you know it it depends. Um, like um, lead and by, they're, they're they're still it's sort of a young man. It could be 
um, a young fellow. It's the same way to say the same thing. So it's the it's a di different ways I should say different ways to say the same thing. So that's what we have here. So by in every dialect, just the word bughal. But in Munster, they also have the word garsoon. So bughal is in every dialect. Garsoon is in Munster. And up in Ulster, they have Stokoch. That's uh, well, it's most it's 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 um it's it's most common in Ulster, Stokoch. So obviously, anyone can use either of these words, but they're just more more um, more common in these dialects. Um, and so um, then, for girl, yeah, it's nice to give a bit of historical background there, like. I speak mostly the Munster dialect. I don't say Garsoon though. I do say Buchel for me. Um, but I know uh, there are people who use that word. Um, if anybody recognizes the word, it's uh, I think from Garçon in French, and that shows the influence of the French language maybe through Cork and the the south southern coast of Ireland. So it's not like. Um, their these dialects formed for no reason. It, for me, it makes sense to look at it from like the big historical time point that you were saying, Siobhan, over generations. Like there's a reason somewhere in the background why these different words formed and got popular in different areas in Ireland. So I just wanted to add that about uh, Gasson. That's true. That's true. I, I, I that that's it. Um. That has slipped my mind. That that's true because of um, Cork being much nearer geographically to France, um, so that that would make sense. Um, so then we have a uh, girl. Now, Kalyin is in every dialect, but well, now it's it, monster. That's what they say. But I know that people use this in every in in. Other dialects, the kind of dialect, Gerhalje, it can also be used there, Gerhalje. And the thing is about Kalin and Gerhalje, we're talking about basically the same word here. So Kalin can come from Kalje, and they all go back to the, Kalje being an old Irish word for a woman. So Kalin, the Ian, means little. And you'll see that with a lot of uh, words in Irish, like Madre is the Irish for a dog, Madre. But madrin would be a little dog. So Ian is little. So Kalyan, it's like saying a small woman, little woman. So it's a girl. And Ger Kalya, Ger, short. So it's like saying a short woman, a girl. And um, Girshuk, Girshuk. And now I've heard Girshuk in, in, in Connacht as well. So I suppose you could say it is mostly Ulster, but it has travelled. It has travelled. Um, so Girshuk as well. So, Kalyin, Ger, Kalyi, Gershuk. Now, I don't know how Gershuk came about, but I do know about um, Kalyin and Ger, Kalyi. So, that's, there, those are the differences there. But, of course, as you can see, if someone used Kalyin, everyone would understand. And, of course, with, with, uh, since, the, since the invention of the radio, people from all over Ireland have become used, uh, uh, Irish speakers all over Ireland have become quite used to um, the different dialects, especially the different words. Maybe they might find it a bit difficult to understand the different um, like uh, rhythms of speech and different turns of phrases, perhaps, but certainly the nouns, the nouns have become way more common um, because, uh, because of radio. Even traditionally, people travelled all over the country and um, for various business reasons or whatever, and words would have spread that way as well. But some would would be more common in some areas compared to other areas. So now the word also. Now, as you can see here, there are many different ways to say also. Same in English in a way. Also as well. Um, so, but in Irish, as you can see, there's about two ways. Um, to um, to say it in all the um, dialects. So, fust, fust, coma. 
So first, the, you, you hear that a lot in Ulster. That's very, very common. And also, you don't, I don't, I don't think it's heard in other dialects, but um, it's it's very common in, in, in Ulster Irish. First, the, so that's also. Um, freshen, so that'd be very, um, a very, very um, common, universal one, you could say, freshen. And coma, it's it's also heard in, in Connacht and in Ulster, coma, but a lot of people would associate it more with Munster. Now, as you can see, with Munster, we have lish. Now, you might be quite familiar with the word lish, depending on how much Irish you have. So lish literally means with it or with him. So lish can also be also, just depending on where it's placed in a word. Um, in, not in a word, but in a sentence, I should say. So it depends on where it's placed in the sentence. But, um, and of course, ma, ma being good, so ko ma. Uh, so that can be a bit confusing for some people because they think that means so good, but it's, it's not, ko ma means also. Uh, so freshen is one of the most common ways. It's, it's really one of the, uh, it's very universal, uh, freshen. Um, but, and as you can see, ko ma, it's, very universal as well. So now we we go down to the word sick. So here are two words now, chin or tine, depending on, on your dialect. And we'll go into that about the different pronunciations. But um, chin or tine, and um, that's uh, sick. So I, I would say chin. Um, if you're from Munster, you might pronounce it Tyne, and in Ulster, I think you would pronounce it Chin. I'm not too sure about that, but um, they're, they're all pronounced. It's it's pronounced a bit differently, the, depending on the on the dialect. And this word is a very handy one for showing you this those very obvious. Um, differences, like how it goes from chain to tine. Now, that's a, you can see here, if you're familiar with the different dialects, or even with just one dialect in, in, in Irish, you'll already have seen this sort of pattern, where T's can, like in in, Ulst, in Connacht, as you say, in Connacht Irish, T's, they're often pronounced like a, the English CH, so that's why I would say chain. Now, it, not everyone in Ulster pronounces it like that either, but there's the thing about the I, so a T-I, so there are all these different patterns that, uh, and that, that brings you into spelling again, but uh, it's, there are all these different patterns in, in Irish. Now, depending on the dialect, there would be a different pattern in each dialect in a way. Maybe the same pattern, but for different results. That's maybe a better way to say it. So um, so if someone's from Munster, for example, they see TI, they're going to think T or TI or something like that, whereas um, I would say CHI. So um, then with the INN, Munster, IN, I would say in or something like that. So it's just how different people, depending on, on the dialect, you're going to see a word and follow this pattern, which is all over the, all over, there's tons of patterns. And I, that's the thing with spelling, you've probably come across it yourself. At first, it seems nonsensical, just, there's no rhyme or reason to it, but it's not like that at all. There are just tons and tons of patterns, tons of them. And it's just that in the different dialects, they will, let's say, interpret those patterns in a different way. That's the best way to say it. Interpret those patterns in a different way and sound them differently. And then we've got the word broche. And that also means chain, but it's mostly... It's mostly monster, but you do get it. You do get it elsewhere, of course, but people would associate it with monster over any other um, dialect. So now we're going on to the same word but different pronunciation, a bit like how we had um, chi in there, that was a good one, as we, and it's, it's written here as well. 
So we've got a, a word here, what I would pronounce as Paul. Now, P-O-L-L, -L, that means a hole, hole, um, like a hole in the ground. Um, so I would pronounce it Paul. People in Munster would pronounce it Paul. But up in Ulster, Paul. So, and, um, so there's a difference. Or Paul. So it, it's just a slightly different ways, and that's all because of O L L. So you see a vowel and two L's. So how do you take it? So it's a, it's the same in English. It's a bit like how um, people pronounce T H as, as a proper T H. Some people just see T H and they're just going to say T. A bit like how some people can't pronounce um, the the number three different from a tree. So. I have problems myself being Irish <laughs> um, with, with pronouncing those words even so in English. So the T-H-R-E-E -E and um, T-R-E-E. -E. So it's the same thing in Irish. You've got those things as well. So Powell, Pull. Cron, that's how I would say it. A cron is a tree. So that being like a tree that grows in the ground. T-R-E-E. -E. So Ulster Cran. Um, I think I think it's Cran. Um, of course, um, I'd be I'd be linking to a resource that gives you the pronunciation and the three, these three major dialects um, for most words in Irish. And there's a great website Chonglin.ie, but it, and that'll be linked at the end of um, of this slideshow. Um, so Cran, Cran, so bit of a difference there. And then Munster, we have crown. So different again. So, so it's just different. There's a pattern here for any other words that any other word that would end with in 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 Connacht it would be on. In in Munster it would be own. Generally, if this if someone sees this sort of piece in the pattern, they will pronounce it this way. Um, whichever way they're used to. So that's the thing about patterns. So if it's if crown is pronounced crown, they're going to pronounce another word that's spelled similarly. That's that's the idea with patterns. And then as we've already discussed, chin, 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 tine. So um, so if so as I was saying, if someone sees a similarly spelled word and they're from Ulster, they'll pronounce it similarly to how they pronounce this word and the word for sick. So it's the same in every other dialect as well. So it's um, it all depends. You could take one word and it, of course there's exceptions. There's exceptions to these patterns, but uh, they do exist and they're handy because it, 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 it makes life way easier, of course, because if that's the whole thing with spelling, because why would you spell words anyway if they're just going to change, no matter what? Why would you spell them one way or the other? Um, so that's the thing with these. So now, different grammar. Now this is probably I would say the tr more trickier part. Well, we have had different nouns. They're that are spelled differently are the same word, the same meaning, like different nouns, same meaning, same meaning, different nouns, all this sort of thing um, are the same noun, different meanings. Um, so the different grammar, this is, I suppose, a more trickier part, especially when you're listening to someone talking. Um, because you to, your brain is not used to it. If you're used to one dialect, your brain mightn't be as used to the other dialect if you aren't listening to it enough. So, Munster Ignorus uh, instead of Ignorus. For example, Ignorus instead of Ignorus, which you may have in the other dialects. Not a huge difference, but it's but it's there. You've got a, you've gone from a D sound to an N sound. If you if you see it written, it's pretty obvious. But if you're listening to someone and not used of um, of of their dialect or not used of speaking Irish, um, you, because a lot of this does a lot of. A lot of um, becoming comfortable with 
understanding different dialects or just even the ability to understand different dialects, it does have it it does correlate with the with how fluent you are in Irish, or not even fluent I would say, but um the amount of Irish you speak or that you the ability to speak or your knowledge of Irish. Like it does it does have um it it, it does have it have a thing to do with it because of course if you don't understand the words in one dialect you can't understand them in another. Um so that's that's the thing there. So um we'll be getting onto that later. So ignorus instead of ignorus, ha dug instead of near hug. So that's the thing in Ulster, you got ha instead of knee. So that's their sort of negative. Uh we have knee or near or neil in Connacht and Munster. But in Ulster they have ka or can. So it's um it's as long as you know it, it makes more sense. Uh way more sense. And the first time you pick up a <laughs> it's happened to myself, I picked up an Ulster book, you know what age it was, but um just picked this thing up saw these cars and hadn't a notion what was going on. But um as long as soon as you know it'll make perfect sense because then all you have to do is you understand that they're just being it's it's just knee or knee or kneel being replaced by ha or can. So um it's it's um it's it's not that hard at all when you actually know that the difference exists. If you don't, you're going to have a problem, of course, you're going to be wondering what all these are doing. Um so and then Connacht Somalia, depending on your local dialect in Connacht, you might say Somalia, uh instead of Sawalia. So Somalia, Somalia. So that's the thing about um you might be familiar with the whole idea of eclipses and the nation, but it's a grammatical term, the whole thing about M B and M and B H. So um depending on dialect, these can be reversible uh in grammar. So they're they're like just examples of the differences. There are many other differences uh in grammar, but then we've we have the um the standard. We've got this national standard, which have taken in which there are many different um, parts of the various dialects, and they've all been sort of mixed together to make this sort of universal dialect, national dialect. But it's only for um, for official documents, so everyone will be comfortable from every dialect. Well, that's that's been the idea anyhow, that every dialect would understand it easy, easily and feel that they are um, not being excluded. Because traditionally in Ireland, when it came to official documentation and the likes, there's been a lot of Munster Irish. And that was, I suppose, an attempt was made at one point, you could say, by the state to make that sort of the official um, dialect or whatever. And that did happen to a certain degree, that Munster did become um, the, the sort of official dialect uh, or standard dialect. But now there's sort of this um, this synthetic standard dialect, which which um, is a mixture of all the dialects. So that's and that's also you you also see that in spelling. Mm -hmm. Like I find I, I'm yes, getting on. the impression that the Connemara dialect is kind of squeezing its way in to be more official, just because it's on the TV so much with T. G. Carr. What do you think? Yeah, I do agree. It was um I see this especially with uh, universities and especially with TG Cahar, but um even in studies and the like or uh well that's the thing with the well with, with spoken Irish, um you could say that uh, the Connemara Irish or the Connacht is becoming way more influential. Um and because there are just so many on on TG Cahar because TG Cahar I suppose is based in 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 Connemara that's why you would that's why it's it's um it's becoming more visible and I so I know some some people with other dialects they do see that as a sort of maybe some people see that as a threat to their own dialect or whatever or they may seem feel excluded because it's it's more common but um I suppose that's how <laughs> well, <laughs> there's always ups and downs um. Uh, sort of like it's a, a bit like a reigning dynasties of um of yeah. of dialects. And uh, John asked um about um with shows like Rustin Rune and others is the spoken dialect 
Sorry, I just uh, missed the last part of that sentence. Yeah, that whether it whether it's the Connacht kind of dialect that's spoken in shows like Rust Naroon. Now, Rust Naroon, you have a mixture. Um, I know that there's a. It depends on the character, and that's been done um, on purpose, of course, to include all the main dialects. You have some characters. Now, I'm not a I'm not a big fan of Rust Naroon. I don't. I I've, I've rarely watched it, but I do know that uh, there's like a family with a Munster dialect. There's a family with um. An Ulster dialect, and uh, of course, there's a good lot of um, of, of Connacht as well. I suppose the main one would be Connacht. I'm not exactly sure because I remember there being, any time I've watched it, I remember there being a good lot of Ulster. Um, so, uh, but it's based, I think, in what would be um, a, a Connacht town, but yeah. like, or something. I, I if 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 my memory serves me right, but um, there is a good lot of Ulster. Uh, and Munster, there are a good lot of different characters with different um, dialects there. So it's a mixture, you could say there's a, there are many different, it depends on the character. So thanks for that question, Jan. So I take it if there's uh, no more questions. Yeah. No, that's oh, it for now. Yeah. There's one lingering from Aaron, but we'll leave it maybe more towards the end because it might be more suitable then. All right, that's grand. That's grand. Lovely. So, um, we move on from this. Oh, right. Uh, so, yeah. So, I suppose what you've been waiting for, how to get a hang of, of dialect. So, how to get your head around all these differences. So there's no there's no magic trick. I can't just give you something and say, there you go, you're going to magically understand all three dialects. But there's ways to 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 learn to understand them. And in a way you might not have to make that much of an effort. So the thing is listen to as many dialects as you can, even if you don't understand everything. That's really important. So of course you've Ross Naroon many different um, dialects there and um, you've got Reddy and the Gales of that of course some may say this kind of matter Irish I suppose you could say Connacht is predominant but um, you have you have uh, a lot and at near near the end here I'll have um, examples of different programs that are sort of specify in more region in in more regional dialects like um, you've got it how how Radio and the Gael of the Works, that's the um, the National Irish Language radio station, and it's available online to listen to live and as podcasts as well. So how that works is um, there are different, like there's the news, just like a normal um, radio station, but there's also um, but there are also different programs. So you might have a chat show sort of thing, or question and answer sort of thing, or a political show, music. Um, Different things. Um, so, one of um, quite often you have like a regional news show. So it's like a, a, you've got like an hour or so of um, let's say Ulster news. So that would be like um, like what you would have on a, a local radio station. So you have uh, the various whatever that's going on, various events talking about the various events or. Uh, whatever that's happening in Ulster, for example, and you have different people calling in local, local, whatever activists or whatever. So um, you you've um, you've got that. So you have like an Ulster, Connacht, and um, and Munster, and then you have a pro. You've got there's a studio in Dublin, and. There's um there's a music program and there's also the the what would it be I suppose the um current events program and that's also broadcast from Dublin and you've got many different speakers and that's of course because you're you you've just there's people there, there are speakers from all over the country that may be um, invited like guest speakers to uh, like different politicians or people who've got a like some Irish speaker who just like you have in your normal um, English language um, st station about um, speaking about, I don't know, book launch or 
something about like the Middle East or something. Um, it, it could be anything really. So that's how it works. So with Red and Gales, the, there are some programs that are more specific when it comes to local dialects. So, and I'll, I'll have a list um, n nearer the end of the various uh, programs. Those are, uh, well, just uh, like three examples of them. Um, but you can find out for yourself as well on Red and Gales so which ones you, you most like to listen to yourself. So, um, now, when it comes to, like you're listening to, let's say, one of those programs and you hear this word that keeps coming up all the time. So, let's say it's Faduda, which is sort of a, an Ulster saying. Now, you just hear this Faduda all the time. You might think it even sounds a bit funny. This is Faduda, Faduda, Faduda. And you're listening to this and you're, ju you're just wondering, like, what does this mean? And you're trying to spell it. You can't find it. So, you're wondering, like, how do I find this out? Now, the thing is, of course, there's an easy one. Ask someone. Now, you might not be able to ask someone, but if, as, as you, as you're, if you're a member of uh, Bite Size Irish Gaelic, you do have someone to ask <laughs> me, so um, there's that added advantage. But um, if you don't have someone to ask or whatever, um, just like in English, sometimes there are new terms of phrase and you just can't figure out how to spell it. Some weird word that someone keeps saying in the radio or something that your teenager keeps saying or something and you just can't figure out how to Google it. But just like in English, if you can't get someone to... If, if if all dictionaries fail and you don't just you're like stranded on a desert island and don't have anyone to ask, um, you will figure out what it means eventually, anyhow. Um, or you might just stumble upon it in a book, which happens to people, or or, or something like that, or so just some discussion about it, like Faduda, which um, so which means about it, by the way, so um, in, in Ulster. So um, now just going back into the pattern. So each dialect has its own pronunciation pattern. So that's just the idea as it was, as I hope I, I attempted to, <laughs> to, to, to um, explain. Um, if you can pronounce one word, chances are you'll pronounce a similarly spelled word the same way. That's just a, a basic little creed you could have uh, to get your way through Irish. So when, when you're reading something like, if you see something with ending, especially with endings, but really with any sort of um, patterns, a spelling pattern. So if you pronounce it one way, you're going to spell you're going to pronounce a similarly spelled word the same way more than likely. So that's a, a nice thing to remember. But again, listen, listen, listen and read. Um, reading is very good too. And now, with the thing about the standard dialect, a lot of things are sort of written in a standard dialect today. But you can you can find things that are um, articles, for example, that are more, uh, more regional when it comes to, to dialect. Um, so, so they exist also, but the, the, your best bet is probably spoken Irish. Or uh, also, you have um, you have TG Cahar, which can have Irish subtitles. Subtitles actually in Irish instead of in English. So that's available online as well. But we there's just going to be a link to that um, shortly. So and here it is. So. Oops. So now, as I was saying, listen. So you've got, and you can, you, you this is be, this is being um, attached anyhow. So you're going to get a PDF of this, but um, of these slides. But um, monster dialect and silo. Yes, that's a program that mostly has speakers, almost always has speakers, um, with a Munster dialect and the presenter has a Munster dialect and as I said most speakers will have a Munster dialect. Um, Ulster dialect Barsh Gaeltha, again, presenter is Ulster Irish and most of the guest speakers would have as well. And Connacht dialect, Eidr is a good example. 
and that's again presenter kind of Irish most of the speakers but also most of the sort of guests would have as well so to find those um those podcasts or even live radio go to rnag.ie so that's uh, that's where to go and you can then um, navigate around there to either podcasts or live uh, live broadcasts and then we as i was saying about um, tg cahar um you've got a, a, a subtitles available in irish on the online player so you'll probably see um you should see um uh, a sort of a notice under the the um the player itself the sort of the screen and it'll tell you how to how to get those working they're not available for every program but for a good few they are so tgcare.ie so that helps also to understand what someone's saying when you're reading it um, because even in english if someone has a very very thick accent or a very strong dialect in english you would want to see it written to understand what they're saying and so it's the same in irish you, you've got that in irish as well um so i'm not too sure what the time is on do you have the time i don't know if yeah. it's there yeah um <laughs> so we're yeah, I, I checked um with people here and there's no big time pressure so i'd say we've covered the the main stuff now siobhan haven't we so we can do a bit of yeah. um chat and discussion so there was a couple of more questions so um, what Aaron asked, um, kind of you you covered it, but it might even be worth just repeating what you covered. So let me read out the question. So Aaron said, "I've just finished a beginner's course in the Irish language. My teacher is from Donegal, so mainly we were learning the Ulster dialect. So what are some tips for being able to communicate with um, Irish speakers of other dialects?" without learning them all. So I guess without learning to speak them all. Um, I'm just trying to grasp one uh, Gurdamahaga. So thanks Erin. What do you think Siobhan? I would say that if you if you're if you're going to keep learning Ulster Irish, speak Ulster Irish. Now a handy thing is now as you as like speak whatever irish you know that's basically how, how it goes now but when you become more fluent in irish when, when you when you have more more irish and if you're speaking to someone and they do not know what a word means like um for example we had one there about uh, a boy maybe you would say stoke hook for just for as an example um and this person does not have a notion what you're saying uh, you will more than likely have an, another word for that word. For example, buchel. So, more than likely, when you have an awful lot of Irish, a good lot of Irish, you'll more than likely have two words for those sort of peculiar words to your own dialect. But the good thing is, because of um, TJ Cahar and Reggie Nagelfa, because of that, most people, most, Irish speakers, maybe some, of course, uh, when it comes to learners, of course you're learning, and that's a different um, that's a different thing altogether because you're it, it that it's a challenge in itself to to learn all these new words. Never mind which dialect they're in, but um, any spe Irish speaker will understand the vast majority of any other dialect. And if you're maybe one thing would be to speak slower if the person is having some difficulty and uh, something like that but but stick with your dialect if, if you choose ulster stick with ulster and people will understand you like like as i said at the beginning it's the same language so it's just a different dialect it's the same language but of course there are differences as as uh, as, as i've pointed out it's just that most people i would say all irish speakers will know these basic uh, differences are if they don't they will ask and that you, you'll get around it but it's probably just going to be one little phrase or something but the vast majority of, of, of Irish speakers are well acquainted with the with other dialects at this stage yeah and I'd say at, so at thanks the for same that, time yeah, I'd say like still don't beat yourself up about it like 
if I hear an Ulster speaker on TG Cahar, I still, I, I kind of struggle sometimes. Like it's it's not so natural to my ear. So there's definitely phrases that probably just fly over me. But yeah, for the most part, it works. But I can only imagine if you're a learner and you can't maybe even distinguish um, the different accents of the different dialects. Yeah, it's tough, so don't beat yourself up about it. So Aaron said, uh, thank you, Siobhan. That's good yeah. to know. Um, there was another question. You're welcome um, to have all your thoughts. Um, yeah. And, uh, another, yeah, go ahead. I was just about Ulster, as you were saying, Owen. Uh, you certainly don't beat yourself up about Ulster. Um, funnily enough, I've always found Ulster a bit easier than Munster, strangely. But um, I spent some time in Munster and that, that, that cleared things up a bit. But uh, some people may have a particular... Most people do find Ulster, I'm talking about native speakers, find Ulster more difficult than than um, than any other dialect. That's the truth of it. So especially if it's Ulster, if you do find that a bit more difficult, that's that's only natural, let's say. But um, it, we, we all have to get acquainted with different dialects. And um, again, Listening, that's that always fixes that. No. I'm sorry about that, Owen. So. No, um, so I should mention two things. So there was a, a question from John that I'd ask you, Siobhan. But um, before that, uh, like you mentioned, there were a couple of handouts. Um, so in the GoToWebinar software, you should be able to see the handout section. And if you expand that, there's two PDFs. And you can click on each of the PDFs and it, it will probably open in your browser. But if you can uh, download that file now and you'd have um, all the links that Siobhan was mentioning, um, there's the handout and there's Siobhan's presentation in PDF form. So hopefully that will help. Um, and in any case, um, I'll try to email them out to each of you. So um, that might take me a couple of days though just to say that. So uh, John was asking, Siobhan, like around the broadcasts a bit, he was asking, can you recommend any programs or broadcasts uh, where the language is spoken intentionally slowly for students because natural, naturally spoken Irish can be very fast between um, native speakers. What do you think? Would you have any ideas or tips there, Siobhan? I know that they exist, I just can't think of any one of them off the top of my head. But I know that these programs do exist or that there are certain um, certain videos or recordings. I have come across them. Um, so I can't think of one off the top of my head, but I could search around. Um, there, there have been programs for students on um, on Ready and Gilt, I know that. Um, so I'd 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 have to I'd have to research a bit to actually find them, um, but there are there are some things on YouTube, for example, for learners, and um, like short conversations and the like. Um, but uh, you might find it depending on the program, in, on on TG Cahill, you might actually find that the people are speaking slower than is natural, just so everyone will understand them. So um, just to make themselves clearer, so um, you might find that helpful. So if you if you if you um, if you give a listen to some programs, you might actually hear it yourself. But I'll have a search around for for any yeah. particular program or broadcast or recording that's been made for this that's more suited for students, like with a slower pace. Okay. Um, uh, so uh, David said, I listen to RT radio quite often and words are starting to ring in my ear. Well, that's good, David. And John said, thank you. So um, if there are any more questions now, now is the time to send them in to us. Um, I, I want to go through things that I learned today, Siobhan. But before I do that, um, are there any other slides that you need to go through? And just a um, question on should I choose a particular dialect? And then there's just going to be a few very quick links at the end there that um, can be sent out in an email. But um, just this question here about should I choose a particular dialect? So you might be asking yourself that. Um, 
So do you have a connection? The first question to ask yourself is do you have a connection to one area over another? Maybe your ancestors came from a certain area and you want to speak the Irish from that area if if you know of the dialect which was once spoken there or which is still spoken there. Um, also, for example, like you were, you did a beginner's course in Ulster Irish, so you may take the the decision or you may not um, to stick with Ulster Irish. Um, all up to yourself, of course, as it is with everyone. And then there's just the thing about does any dialect take your fancy? Like if you're just listening to the radio and you're thinking like, I love that dialect, I want to be able to speak like that. Or a certain speaker, some people just really like how a certain person speaks and they're wondering what dialect does that person have? I want to speak like that person. Like uh, So it, that's maybe that's what, how you choose. And But the thing about actually choosing a dialect, it's really... As the thing is, like, focus on learning Irish, adopt the dialect later. That's a good idea as well, especially if you don't have any sort of fancy for any particular dialect at the beginning. Again, it's the, it's the one language. So as long as you're learning Irish and learning new words and building up your vocabulary, you can sort of, let's say, you could um, filter it later on to be more similar to one particular dialect, if that's your wish. And again, mixed dialect, nothing wrong with that. We all have them, really, no matter what language. Uh, we pretty much all have them, unless, unless I suppose there are some people who live uh, uh, maybe abroad or whatever in the particular community, which has been sort of, uh, I don't know, it, it just it, it, they have the same dialect for generations or whatever, but generally people do with mixed dialect. Um, same in Irish, there are pe people who do have a very, very unique dialect particular to their specific locality. But um, an awful, I would say, a majority of Irish speakers at this stage, anyhow, we do have a mixed dialect to some degree or other. We do have sort of loan words, let's say, from other dialects are just odd pronunciations, we might pronounce the odd word in in a way that's more similar to um to another dialect. Uh, so for example Mayo Irish, that's just their their dialect, but it does it does sound like a mixture of Connemara and Donegal. So that's just how it is. That's a mixed dialect for you and it is an actual dialect. They're all mixed really in a way. But um, it's the same language. So it's just nothing wrong if you do learn Irish as a sort of mixed dialect and you have one turn of speech that's Ulster and then you pronounce something a more monster way. It, there's nothing wrong with this at all. It's just it, if you, it, it's it's all up to yourself. Some people might think it's odd. Some people might not. It's that's just their opinion, and um, there's nothing wrong with this as long as people can understand you. That's the that's the main thing, of course, because language is a communication method. That's why we speak any language. So that's an important factor to bring into it. But um, mixed dialects, nothing wrong with them. So don't, don't worry yourself about that. It's all up to yourself really to make those decisions just to understand the options, let's say. So um, that's the thing about um, uh, learning a particular dialect. So we've covered the questions. And now they're just um, these out, as I uh, said. Um, so there's Anglin. You've got the three major dictionaries in Irish. You've got a grammar wizard, which helps you with conjugations and stuff. And then there's pronunciations available, like a recorded pronunciation available for many, many words. And they're recorded in the three main dialects, which is helpful. And then there's folklore.ie or .ie, which is a modern dictionary with new modern uh, turns of phrase and modern words and there's also pronunciation available there and then there's chairman that i.e there are more technical terms like computer terms and political terms and for then that also pronounces pronunciation is more like a community site where people sort of volunteer to pronounce words in and you often have different di uh, dialects available there and you can see where the person's from originally and where the dialect is from so you can you can tell there so um, there are just some helpful links. Um, the, the Changlin is just a treasure, a treasure trove. It's it's really the, one of the most helpful resources online. I, in my personal opinion, I, I use it every day. Uh, <laughs> university professors, doctors of Irish, they use it every day at this stage. It's one of those things. It's from the learner to the to the expert. It every it's really 
a brilliant resource. So is folklore and the others as well. But um, that's really like the best. As it's a, it's it's a, I don't know how many in one at this stage. It's just so much on it. So that's a, that's it. So um, if you have any more questions, um, I'm I'm happy to to receive them. Yeah. Um. Thanks to everyone. Like John, David, Aaron. Thanks to you all for attending. Like. What I learned today, there was a few points, Siobhan. Um, it, the most common phrases can be the most different ones. And uh, like David was telling me, as long as you're learning the basics, then there's a lot of commonality between the dialects. Um, and you can learn the big difference like Kajimara Tatu or Kunasa Tatu. Um, but like you were saying, Learn Irish and don't let it stop you learning to speak it. Um, about the Conor and the Twitter feed, that they obviously um, spread a lot of news, so that would be a good feed to um, subscribe to. Um, what else with radio? Um, people are really have been exposed in the past generation to the different dialects, and like you're saying, a lot of words, especially nouns, have just been spread and even imported. That's right, like when I'm speaking, um, I don't always know if uh, it's a really a monster phrase or it's a more maybe generic phrase that I'm using. Um, the way you were talking about spelling patterns and that there's a lot of patterns of how you spell and pronounce uh, those patterns in Irish. And if you can start um, following a, a certain dialect, you might realize that um, they pronounce certain patterns a certain way. Um, so it's maybe if when you're starting to really tune your ear to a certain dialect, that might start to make sense. That's a bit of a, an advanced one. Um, the standard dialect is really for written Irish, and it was to make everybody happy. But now for an interesting thing for Irish, I think when you're speaking it, there's no like um, a official good dialect to speak to make yourself feel more important. I don't think so. Everybody just speaks their own dialect. So yeah, on Radio Nagretic it's pretty interesting. You hear just the different dialects and people don't generally switch um, dialects to try to make themselves clear. Maybe subconsciously a bit. But. Um, Siobhan, you said there's no magic tricks. I think that's true. Um, it really comes down to a bit of effort too. Um, what else? Um, you said listen, listen, listen and read. Um, so it, it comes down to uh, listening a lot. And I didn't know about the TG Cahar, um Irish language subtitles. That's really interesting. Um, for a learner, it might be a good way to kind of push yourself compared to the English language subtitles. So um, let's call it a day, Siobhan. Got a meal and Thank you. It was a pleasure. Yeah. And, and it's got a meal uh, and Thanks yeah. to everyone who attended. Yeah, definitely. And uh, thanks to you, Owen, of course. <laughs> yeah. A great fun. So uh, what I'm do is email out. Um, the handout and presentation and the links. So thanks to everybody.